Uh, how do you feel right now this week? I mean, uh, you're, you're the man here, you know, uh, headlining uh, Spike TV. How does it feel fight week? Uh, it feels good. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Uh, I like Seattle. The weather is great. It's, uh, it's a beautiful city. I uh, can't wait to um, really uh, see some more of the city before I leave. You know, in the in the, uh, the call the other day, you said that you and uh, your camp wanted to make sure that it, this was the right fight. You know, you really considered it. What about it is the right fight? What, what was the kind of the deciding factors that, that led you to go ahead and take this fight on short notice? Well, ultimately, what was the right I minute mean, was the right fight is the fact that Joe Silva calls. When Joe Silva calls, you pick up the phone and you say yes to whatever he says. So that ultimately was the deciding factor. Um, it, I mean, it was a little bit sooner than I wanted. So, you know, you gotta stop and assess where you are, how you feel, where you're at in your training camp, how far you've been, you know, coming along in, in your training. When I talk to my trainer, he says, bro, you're fine, you can fight next weekend. You know, you can fight this weekend, is what it actually what he said. Um, I, I, you know, it's, I had just got done doing, uh, working with my, 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 my buddy Alexander Gustafson for his training camp. And Alex is in such great shape that when you're helping him with his training camp, you also need to be in shape and ready to go five or six rounds with him. So, you know, I was, I was just ready to go. You know, I was, I, was, I was working hard every day with Alex. And, uh, you know, it was, it was good timing to give me uh, a couple days rest before I started the really hard part of my training camp. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, got it done. You came to the UFC very early in your career. Now you're headlining very early in your career. And when you were starting out, did you envision it happening this fast, or do you feel like it's rushing along a little bit for you? You know, um, I didn't expect to get four fights in last year, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, I did two fights back to back with February and then April, and then I took a fight out of nowhere uh, last April 9th. I'm sorry, August 9th in Oakland, and. Um, that was really the the, the fight that was. Uh, other than that, I really planned on fighting in November against Tim Bosch. Um, and that fight in, uh, again against Rodney Wallace just kind of popped up out of nowhere. So yeah, it just kind of put me in uh, a different standing over the course of the year, having three wins and four wins. And um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about where I'm at. And uh, I, I like the opportunity, and I'm happy. The fans are now like touting you as the next potential superstar, you know, a challenger for the belt here soon. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, does that excite you to think about those? I know you can't look past this fight at all, but does it excite you to think about those possibilities, or do you try to keep that down? Uh, I don't. I don't think about that. I think about being good every day. And there's no way I can think that I'm going to be the best I can be until I stop getting beat up in training. You know what I mean? I, I get beat up in training by some some really great guys, and I see it every day. I see the, the, the things that I need to correct. I see uh, the places and the areas I need to improve. So it's no it's no surprise to me that you know I need to improve in, in all these areas and able to enable in order to to be a champ like a, a Silva or a, or a GSP or or the way BJ is, you know, or was. I'm sorry. You know, just just dominate. You know, it's not just about getting there. It's about you know locking it down for a while. At least for me. At least for me. I don't know. How I roll. <laughs> One's not enough, huh? Not just a word. You talk about your style. Sometimes when we see really successful wrestlers transition to MMA, there's that that period where uh, and you always hear that people talk about laying prey. But you were never like that. You've always been very active on top. How did you learn that so fast, and what enabled you to do it quickly in your career? Um, some guys are great at getting takedowns in wrestling, and I was a guy who was pretty good at getting takedowns, but I was always really good on top. So it kind of uh, enabled me when I got into MMA to use my, my top control and use my jiu-jitsu, or learn jiu-jitsu quite quickly. What is it about your top game to the untrained eye? I mean, why are you so successful when it goes to that position? It's what I do. It's what I do. It's, I don't know really how I do it, but it's what I do. It's it's interesting when I look back at the fights and, and listen to some of the commentary. They're like, oh, yeah, he has pretty big holes. The guy should be able to get out. But uh, <laughs> it's, it, it looks that way, you know? It looks that way. 
But it, you know, it's funny because um, when you're when you're a wrestler and you do BJJ, there's certain mistakes that you make. And when you're a BJJ guy and you try to wrestle, there's certain mistakes that you make. So my jujitsu game, uh, it uses a lot of wrestling positions and wrestling technique. So a lot of stuff is not traditional jujitsu, and it does not look. How do you say it? It, it doesn't always look like it works, <laughs> but it does. Do you think you consider yourself kind of a new breed kind of guy, or is there a guy you know in UFC history that has been like you, successful at wrestling, has been able to uh, kind of that style that you mimic yours on, or is it completely new breed? Um, I don't know. I, you know, to be honest, I don't know if I've watched enough UFC to say that. I have a, a brand new style that no one else has had before me. I think that'd be kind of ego stroking if I did say that. Um, and there's probably some other wrestlers out there that have my style, and uh, you know, I'm one of those guys. I have no problem biting anybody else's style, none. You know, I, I grab a little bit from this guy, a little bit from that guy, and I just try to blend it into whatever else I do in my in my repertoire. What kind of uh, problems does a veteran like Little Mog present you? Um, he's been around for a long time and he knows all the tricks and, you know, he's, he's been there, he's done that. And that's really the most dangerous thing about him is just that he's been in bad positions and he's battled through them and he's been in good positions and, you know, and, and won them. So he has a lot of confidence. Any uh, new holes you're going to break out, like Mr. Wonderful last time? Or? You know, if, I, if, I, if there is, I can't tell you right now. <laughs> You know, he's, he's a black belt in BJJ. He'll have plenty of time to defense if I tell you what it is right now. Can you give it like a name? Not even tell us what the move is? You just... I shouldn't even be talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious business. Serious business. <laughs> so what did you say earlier? A ladybug? Yeah, a ladybug. You know, there was a ladybug that was, almost got trampled. It was in between the, uh, the, the mats. And, you know, I just... I can't just let it get crushed by me and some Neanderthal. You know? <laughs> I just, uh, I gotta. <laughs> nah, it's, uh, my trainer partner is great. <laughs> I just, I didn't want to say. I just want to save the little guy. I'm doing ground and pound, and you see a ladybug there. It's like a, it's a sign. It's screaming, "Save me, Phil!" I don't want to die here in the crack of a of a mat. You know. Here in the Hyatt, on Ethan Olive. He wants to live a long, healthy life, and, and he should. Or she should. Any correlations to Little Mom Saturday? The Ladybug? Yeah. I've heard, I heard, I heard they're good luck. I have heard that. Yeah, but with Little Mom, is that, are you I not going to see him not see him on Saturday? Uh, you know, uh, if he gets in that position? I don't know if that'd be okay. <laughs> but if by chance there's a Ladybug there, we might have to revisit this. <laughs> cool. yeah. What's the next step then? Crime fighting? I'm sorry? What's the next step then? Crime fighting? You can go from this to crime fighting? You know, fighting? I'm, I'm going to lead a crime fighting to the, to the cats to do it best, you know. You know, I, I, I save ladybugs. It's, it's a small job I have, but I enjoy it. <laughs> hey, yeah. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it.